Our fight for mobile encryption won't end anytime soon. Safari is facing a troubling flaw. United Airlines has a depressing bug bounty program. And in Soviet Russia, governments stop you from protesting. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. I'm Shannon Morse, and this is ThreatWire for Wednesday, May 20th, 2015. Your summary of what's threatening our security, privacy, and internet freedom. First off, a huge thanks to everyone who has supported the relaunch of the show. We couldn't be more proud of this awesome community. And of course, if you're new to ThreatWire on the Hack5 channel, this is the show that we did for a year on TechFeed, and now we brought it back. So with that, let's get started. Data encryption is a growing trend in the world of mobile, with Google and Apple both encrypting their messages so only the user holds the private key to allow deauthentication of this information. This is excellent for privacy enthusiasts and consumers alike. However, law enforcement officials feel differently because of the possibility for criminals. Quoted in October, FBI Director James Comey said, Justice may be denied because of a locked phone or an encrypted hard drive. We aren't seeking a backdoor approach. We want to use the front door with clarity and transparency and with clear guidance provided by law. Because of law enforcement's ongoing fight to remove encryption from mobile devices, a letter was drafted to President Obama and sent on Tuesday to the White House from well over 150 companies, civil security organizations, security researchers, and former government officials, including the likes of the EFF. Google, Twitter, Apple, Jeff Moss, who is the founder of DEF CON, and Gordon Lyon, who is the founder of Nmap, just to name a very few. The letter states, quote, We urge you to reject any proposal that U.S. companies deliberately weaken the security of their products. We request that the White House instead focus on developing policies that will promote rather than undermine the wide adoption of strong encryption technology. Such policies will in turn help to promote and protect cybersecurity, economic growth, and human human rights both here and abroad. And over in Russia, the Center for Research in Legitimacy and Political Protest has designed software called Laplace's Demon to search social media posts by known politically oriented groups in hopes of preventing mass disorder, or as we know it, protests. The software went live on May 18th and according to Izvestia.ru, will be monitored by scientists, researchers, law enforcement, and government officials. Laplace's Demon will update every five minutes with posts pertaining to possible unsanctioned rallies with special interest on Twitter, which just happens to be the lead social network for extremist content. Being involved in an unsanctioned protest in Russia can lead to a $600 fine in rubles or 50 hours of community service. Ouch. Researchers have found a flaw in Safari browsers that enables a URL spoofing attack to occur. The research group called Doosan has scripted a small bit of code that makes it look like a Safari browser is connecting to a new site, when in reality it's actually being redirected over to the group's website. This could be used by an attacker to redirect a user to a phishing site, for example. So far, they found that it works on fully patched Safari browsers running on iOS and OS X. My fix until the threat is determined? Use a different browser. Our featured comment today comes from The Stash, who in response to the hackers ought to play oh my god story says, I'm not quite sure if Chris Roberts actually got into the flight control system. If you watch his talks where he talks about gaining access, he doesn't go into much detail about it, only alludes to being able to access the systems with no real evidence. He does make it seem plausible, I'm just not sure that I believe him. Thank you, The Stash. This could actually lead to a huge rabbit hole about what really happened, but suffice it to say, the only person that really knows what really happened is Chris Roberts. While the video that you linked to is from 2011 and only barely touches on the subject about planes, he has done other talks as well about strictly aviation. This has been something the security researcher has been studying for several years, and whether he deserves the FBI's eye or not, my opinion is personally not valid. Now what I will say is this. Over the years, the security of aviation has been a tremendous interest to the, those in the InfoSec community, and lots of problems in the technology have arisen. We need to take the information that Roberts is sharing as a strong reminder that if a technology or a company has a serious security flaw, it needs to be reported to that company so that they can fix it. But if a company doesn't act on that information, how long do you wait until releasing that information to the public to gain traction or do you do it at all? Do we have to wait until
until a plane drops out of the sky? Who knows? Flaws need to be taken seriously by the firms that can fix it preemptively. That's the important word here. United has released a bug bounty pro program for different flaws found in their systems, but bugs that are not eligible include bugs on with onboard Wi-Fi, entertainment systems, or avionics, which is exactly where the problem was allegedly with. Ugh. It's very irritating for me. <laughs> Thank you for the comment, the stash. And if you guys have any thoughts on today's stories, leave them below. Before I go, I want to give a huge thanks to everyone who has supported the show so far over on Patreon. If you find value from this and you can spare a few cents an episode or even just a month, please consider becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash threatwire. And we may even feature your adorable fur babies just like these ones. I love that cat. He's so cute. Anyway, you could see those in the next episode. <laughs> We're hoping to reach our three times a week milestone goal with a rotation of Patrick Norton, Darren Kitchen, and myself. So throughout the month of May, we'll be giving you just a taste of what's to come. I hope you'll contribute to help us keep this coming directly to you, independent and ad-free. So if you can't donate, even a like, a share, and a subscribe goes a really long way too. And you can find all of our episodes, links to our social networks, and other ways to contribute over at threatwire.net. And with that, I'm Shannon Morse. I'll see you on the internet.